All right, hello. Uh, I will give today a presentation about the near real-time WIC platform. WIC stands for Run Intelligent Controller. Uh, in this presentation, we actually have two speakers. Uh, the last 10 minutes, Matti, the PTL of the WIC XAP project, will highlight some of the aspects of the XAP project. And before that, I, uh, Turevci, here, I'm the PTL of the near real-time WIC platform. Uh, we'll give an introduction of the significant changes or updates that we did in the platform over the last year. Uh, as a reminder, the Near Real Time Week is a platform that hosts XAPs. Uh, these XAPs receive data streams via the E2 protocol from the run, from, for instance, the G node B. And by analyzing the data, possibly including machine learning algorithms, uh, they can control and optimize run behavior and then uh, they change this run behavior either via control messages or policy messages that are sent over E2 to the run. Uh, so let's jump to the first slide. Um, quickly, quick summary of what the Near Real Time Week project is. It's a sub-project of the Oran software community. Uh, we work closely with a separate organization, the specification organization, the Oran Alliance. And within the or one software community, there are multiple other projects, including Mati's EXA project, but also a project, for instance, that implements uh, CU, centralized unit. All the source code is stored in Garrett, and the exact list of components that make up the near real-time week platform, you can see from this link. Um, the links you can obviously download, uh, click in the presentation that's downloadable from the Linux Foundation schedule page. Uh, all the source code is distributed under the Apache 2 license. And as a reminder, I mentioned this already, uh, the specifications are worked on by the Oran Alliance, which is a separate legal organization, uh, most specifically Working Group 3, uh, who, which works on the E2 specification, and Working Group 2, which works on the A1. Uh, all the specifications are downloadable from the Oran conference site or from the web page, depending on whether you're a member or not. Uh, I have on the next slide a bit more details on on how we try to align the the schedule of the O1 software community in the lower part of the slide set and the O1 alliance in the upper part, the blue boxes and the red lines. So as you see, uh, we on the O1SC side, on the implementation side, try to release two releases per year, every half year. One we have just accomplished in June. That's the second release. We call that Bronx. And the next one will be Cherry, which is scheduled for release in December. And then we start the next one for next year. And um, as a reminder, the first release we actually released last year in December, and the project started in June 2019. Um, what this slide set also shows that this two releases per year doesn't fit very well or align very well with the specification side where we have alignment with the mobile work congresses, uh, the green bot bullets here. And they actually publish really specifications in February, July, and November every year. With Bronx, we were we were happy that the first E2 specification actually came out in February so that we could implement this in the Bronx release. And that was a big theme of the Bronx release to adapt to from a pre-specification E2 specification to the release published specification. For the next release, Cherry, we are not so lucky. So the next specification update will come in November. Uh, so in Cherry, we will stick with the E2AP version 1.0 and then move in only in Dawn, most likely to the next release of the specification. Uh, if I move on and we stay for some time on this slide, um, this is kind of a, a bit about the architecture of the near real time week. Uh, one thing that we, that I wanted to highlight here is that if you look at the upper right corner, this is the near real time week with all its components, including X subs. And then on the lower right corner, we have the E2 nodes that are managed or, or controlled by the near real time week. And, um, managed was the wrong word, controlled. And, these are, for example, CUs, DUs, and a 5G architecture, G node B, E node B. All of these can be E2 nodes. And as an E2 node, uh, a single E2 node always has exactly one E2 connection 
to the near real time wick. And of course, in the other direction, the near real time wick can have many E2 connections to the various E2 nodes. It can be 10, hundreds, or thousands. Uh, these connections are handled by E2 termination instance. And one of the significant changes that we did was that pre specification, we were assuming that E2 connections, including the SCTP in it, were done from the near real time wick into the E2 node direction. And that was reversed. And now the E2 node is actually connecting to the near real time wick. That uh, caused a lot of changes in the near real time wick code, uh, code base. Uh, as part of this change, uh, there was also a change in configuration update that was actually removed as part of, so from our perspective, removed in the specification. Uh, also, some other message and procedures, load indication, restore status reporting um, were removed. Uh, configuration update, interestingly, is coming back in the E2AP version 1.1 November. Um, so we will have to re implement this. Um, if you move on to the second bullet here, uh, what I wanted to highlight also is that the RIC platform deals exclusively with the E2AP protocol, the E2 application uh, part protocol. And, and this is important because the actual uh, logic, logic on top, it's a layered protocol and the actual logic on top of E2AP is implemented in E2 service models indicated here uh, by those colorful boxes, uh, red, green, blue, and so on. And these E2 service models, they are OPEC to the near real time week platform. So even if the E2AP protocol as such defines, for instance, a concept of trigger, it is the E2 service model for a specific functionality on the E2 node, uh, for instance, for a network interface like the X2AP or E1, that defines how this trigger is actually defined in terms of message types or information elements in this specific function. Um, and this becomes an agreement between the X sub implementation and the implementation on the E2 node on the CU or on the G node B. And from the platform point of view, we are actually fully unaware of this, of this agreement. Uh, one thing for, and that's the E2 manager part of the near real time wake platform in the upper right corner. It actually collects the information on which E2 service model functions are implemented by each of those E2 nodes as part of the E2 setup of the establishment of the connection, stores this in a run function database. And this information is available to XSAP to a query which E2 nodes actually support the E2 service model functions that it that it requires. Uh, this is maybe more important for multi-vendor situations than, than for any other situation. Um, yep, so if we move on, uh, this is the implementation status of the E2 AP, the basic protocol in the near real-time week. You see, we have uh, not implemented WIC service update, so WIC service query and reset yet. All the other messages are already implemented and can be used. Um, the other three not implemented yet or procedures not implemented yet, they are being worked on. And my hope is actually that still doing this year, we might get uh, some late commit related to those. So if you move on, this is a reminder on how the procedures are actually used in the near real time week. On the left hand side, uh, typically the combination of report indications and policy subscriptions makes up an XAP. So a typical XAP using this path would subscribe for report indications, get indication after the subscription from the run node, it will get from the run node indications on, for instance, receiving a message on the network interface, and that message will be copied in full or partial to the RIC. The XAP receives this from the near real-time RIC platform, analyzes this, and based on this makes uh, changes the policy or the behavior of the run by uh, making a policy subscription. And as you see here, these policies include a trigger and the policy and the run will autonomously apply those policies. Another way to use the E2 protocol in XSUP is to first 
And that we see on the right-hand side, uh, starting with the lower right-hand side, uh, is to make a subscription for an insert indication. And the key difference to a report indication is that the the run is expected to halt or suspended uh, call processing or the processing of the push feature. And typically it will send an event that it has received or a message that it has received to the WIC as an indication. And the WIC will analyze the message and respond. And that's what we see on the upper right corner with a control message, for instance, rejecting a message or modifying it or telling the run how to continue with the processing this message. So only after the control message is with received, it will resume with the processing. Um, I have a, two slides on this, which explain this in more detail. First, again, the policy mode, what we saw on the previous slide on the left-hand side. Again, here you see now with a G node B communicating, communicating with the WIC, it continuously sends a stream. If you start with uh, message number one on the lower right-hand side, a continuous stream of indication reports they go to the E2 termination, which is a WIC platform component, which will send this information to the XAP. The XAP again applies its logic, machine learning algorithms, for example, and will then, and that's a new interface that we have uh, in the Bronx really, uh, that we are working on in Sherry, will send a subscription to the subscription manager in this case, it's a policy subscription, and this the subscription manager might apply security checks or uh, merge subscriptions together from other XAPs and send those to the G node B. And the new thing that we implemented here, that we are implementing now, is that initially this interface between XAP and subscription manager was ASN1 based, and uh, we're using the E2AP messages, and we changed, we are changing this to a REST based interface in Sherry. For completeness, the next slide shows the simple message flow, and that's perfectly possible already now to implement X subs using indication insert messages and control. Very simple, low latency case. The GNOB will send an in, uh, E2 indication to the E2 termination, E2 termination forwards to the X sub. X sub analyzes and responds with a control message back to the E2 termination and the GNOB. So those are the two main cases how to implement XAPs using E2. In this slide, which is probably quite quite difficult to read, um, I wanted to highlight again the reversal of the connection establishment and how we generally change the E2 setup. You see on the left-hand side the how it used to be implemented in a pre-specification in the AMBER release, and on the right-hand side how we now implemented it is the published specification. Um, what I want to highlight here is if you look at the first message in the left-hand side, it's an E2 setup that comes from the WIC platform and goes to the run. This has now changed. If you look at the right-hand side, the E2 setup request actually comes from the run to the WIC platform. What the WIC platform does next is it will actually extract the run capabilities or those E2SM functions that I talked earlier about into the uh, run capability database of the WIC platform so that XAPs can query this. And then it will respond back to the run that the E2 setup is completed. This very same extraction was previously done on the left-hand side with the last couple of messages, last four messages. So this is now simplified into one message exchange instead of two, simplifying the E2 setup. And the run configuration conversion, which is in the middle of the left-hand side, that was actually removed as I, uh, as I talked about earlier, and it will most likely come back uh, later again. Uh, if we move on to the next slide, quickly going to a couple of other changes that we did in the near real-time week platform over the last year. Um, so we introduced a new component, the O1 mediator. The O1 mediator mediates between the XAP and the management platform. So it's the interface towards the network management interface uh, or service management orchestration platform. The A1, which you see here, is uh, currently almost like a configuration interface 
uh, as well, but essentially an interface defined by O1 uh, for defining high level declarative policies towards from the management platform or the non real time WIC into the near real time WIC. So on O1 side, uh, it's netconf based. Uh, it exposes, for instance, configuration and configuration interface for XAPs. It can uh, it manages alarms that XAP might want to send, and it forwards uh, makes available metrics provided by XAPs. And on the A1 mediator side, we changed the implementation so, and that's a theme that we had in many other components of the near real time platform as well. Uh, first of all, it stores its policies uh, persist, uh, for persistence in shared data layer and Redis. So that over restart in a container platform, it will uh, it will be maintained this information. And then the other thing it provides statistics via a Prometheus interface, uh, which we then can send over O1 to the outside world. Um, two slides left to go. Um, some changes we did on the RMR side, RMR is the rich message routing library. Uh, what we did there is, first of all, a more reliable route distribution using the routing manager. And then uh, we did also a major rewrite, uh, replacing a library that we previously used, Nano Message Next Generation, where we had some problems with uh, well-defined behavior or in, in case of high load situations, and where we also had problems with low latency, um, with achieving low latency. Uh, so we did a new rewrite that we call SA95, and that's now part of the WIC platform. On the Redis and SDL side, we moved from a single Redis instance to a HA deployment. Uh, right now, using Sentinel, uh, there are some guys investigating also how uh, how we can move to a Redis cluster here. Uh, on the E2 side, where we have E2 termination as one component and the E2 manager uh, as the other component, E2 termination now supports the Prometheus for network uh, for, for interface statistics, for metrics. And the E2 manager has an interesting support for big red button, uh, where we can withdraw the WIC from the from the run, uh, either by closing all E2 connections and waiting for re-establishments or for, by closing them and not accepting any new E2 connections. Uh, the E2 manager also manages multiple E2 termination instances. Right now, this is a static mapping of E2 termination instances to E2 nodes. Uh, so no dynamic scaling. Uh, this would probably be something we want to work on in the next year uh, in combination with some capabilities that come in the new E2AP protocol. Um, and this information is managed by the E2 manager and provided to the other entities that need it in the near real-time rate platform. Um, as a reminder, what you see here, all the yellow parts are near real-time rate platform. The blue parts in the middle are actually concrete X subs that are developed on top of the near real-time platform and that Matti will talk about further. And he will also talk a bit about the X, X sub framework APIs used by the X subs. Um, coming to the last slide, upcoming changes that we're planning uh, to adapting to the new E2AP int, int, uh, protocol. There are changes related to the configuration update. I talked about this quickly. There are changes to the transport network layer on the E2 side. This will give us a scalability and a better failover behavior. And then a small change, but quite important, uh, it introduces object identifiers for E2 service models, which makes it actually easier to find the correct E2 service model uh, that you want to use in an XSAP. Uh, again, especially important in multi-vendor environments. Um, that being said, it ends my part of this presentation, and I would hand over to Matti with that. Uh, thank you, Thorolf. Uh, as Thorolf mentioned, uh, I'm the PTL of the Recap project in the Orion software community. And the focus of that project is to develop open source X apps uh, for this RIC platform. Uh, partially, this is to just demonstrate how to build X apps. Uh, using the XAP SDK and the frameworks, but also to support the ORAN SC end-to-end -end use cases. There are a set of use cases that, that want to exercise the different layers of the ORAN architecture. The main use case uh, is the traffic steering. I'll talk a little bit about the XAPs related to that. 
We have uh, code contributions currently from three companies, and we are, of course, uh, hoping to have more, and we already have some negotiations on the way. So maybe even for the Cherry release, we'll have uh, maybe a couple of extra additional contributors. And the contributors can choose whether they want to contribute code under Apache 2 or Orion software license. And currently we support C++, Python, and Go as the programming languages. So let me first talk about a little bit about the X apps. Uh, we have about half a dozen X apps in, in currently in the recap project. Here I'm highlighting the X apps related to the traffic steering use case. The, the idea of the traffic steering use case is to use the X apps and the near real time rig to basically control, uh, in which cell a UE should be, uh, uh, residing or which which should be the serving cell. So if a if a UE is having poor performance in the current serving cell, the traffic steering use case would uh, basically have this UE handed over to a different cell where it hopefully has a better performance. In <clears throat> the PRONS release, we uh, managed to complete the kind of a basic uh, components of the traffic steering logic. We have the main uh, traffic steering X app that kind of makes the decisions and then a predictor component that predicts the performance of a, a UE if it was handed over to a neighboring cell. In um, uh, Cherry release, we are planning of including the KPI Mon X app from Samsung that actually collects the metrics from the RAN using a uh, KPM E2 service model and it will be stored in this uh, uh, SDL namespace and used by the traffic steering X apps. We're also working with the HCL on the anomaly detection X app that uses this information to raise anomalies on either UEs or cells. And we will also implement the actual control, uh, probably using a pre-spec E2SM since, uh, since the uh, final one won't be ready in time. We have a couple of other X apps that are not tied to the traffic steering use case. Uh, the Hello World X app that is demonstrating on how to implement X apps, uh, all the functionality in C++ and a measurement campaign X app that given a stream of X2 messages format calculates various brand metrics. So, um, from the XAP point of view, the big question is really uh, how how do all the interfaces get exposed to it? So, from uh, the XAP is of course exists in the near real time RIC platform. The different working groups in ORAN are defining different interfaces like the A1, E2, O1, um, and of course they they use different uh, encoding formats like ASN1, etc. So we need to figure out how does how does the X app interface to these different inter uh, these protocols and external entities, and in addition to interacting with the outside world, the X apps are also interacting with other X apps either directly via communication or indirectly via the SDL layer, where one X app uh, produces some data in the SDL and another one consumes that data. So that's that's where we get to the really the X app SDK. How to how to build X apps uh, to take advantage of these different features. I like to present the X app SDK as this a layered cake a diagram where it shows that X app writer can pick and choose what uh, capabilities of the SDK they want to utilize. A simplest X app would basically just utilize Kubernetes and the XAP descriptor and lifecycle management. Um, the XAP descriptor specifies some parameters for the XAP that are then used to construct the Helm chart to deploy the XAP. So the simplest XAP would just deploy on the RIC platform and not do anything. But if the XAP wants to, for example, do messaging or use the shared data, data layer, they would include the libraries uh, related to that. If they want to use the uh, RNIB, uh, where the information about which E2 nodes the RIC is connected to is stored, uh, what are the cells, uh, then there would potentially be other NIBs about information about UEs, measurements, et cetera. 
uh, if the accepts want to utilize that information, they would include the appropriate libraries. Um, we implemented it early in the in the Amber release, um, the kind of primitive APIs for accepts to interact with A101 and E2. In the Cherry release, we're building the higher level interfaces in Go, C++, and Python, the goal of which is to make it very easy for accept writers to access these interfaces and utilize all these facilities. And of course, XAPs will build up on services provided by other XAPs. So it's not only the platform services that are used by the XAPs. So, so what are these, um, what are these high level interfaces? We are implementing them using XAP framework. So you can think of XAP framework as being a library or, or set of packages that you include in your XAP. And the goal is really to make it easier to write X apps. Uh, initially, um, well, uh, the initial X apps were, were pretty complicated, partially because people are not familiar with ASN1 and, uh, and with all these other new interfaces. Uh, now we are working on really, uh, based on the experience of building a few X apps and kind of identifying what is common to different X apps? What is what is the unique uh, part of a particular X app? We are taking the common code and putting it into the X app framework as library code. So um, specifically, looking at the um, interfaces E two O one A one and messaging for configuration management, um, X app will receive its initial configuration. Uh, when it starts, and that configuration may be updated while the XAP is running. Um, in the initial versions, the XAP writer would need to know where to look for this configuration file, how to detect that that configuration file has changed. Um, with the new framework high-level abstraction, the XAP writer only needs to write a function that handles the configuration uh, update. They don't need to know how that uh, configuration file gets to the X app or, or when it's updated, they only need to provide a function. Um, similarly for the O1 uh, metrics and fault reporting, uh, we are providing interfaces for uh, reporting a key value metric or raising and canceling alarms. The X app doesn't need to know how these things are communicated within the RIC or to the OAM layer. Similar to the O O one CM, the policy A one P, uh, the X app only needs to declare what policy types it supports, and provide a function for processing policy instance and messages JSON payloads. It doesn't need to know how to communicate to the A one mediator. It doesn't need to know uh, how the A one mediator uh, finds the right X app to send the messages to. And uh, Thorav already mentioned some of the initial steps towards the E2 um, abstraction, abstracting, uh, like the subscription uh, providing a REST interface rather than needing to construct the E2 uh, subscription message. This is uh, still um, somewhat of a study item, but we are hoping that in Jerry release we have we have some concrete um, steps even beyond, beyond this REST interface. And for messaging. Um, the RMR messaging layer provides a very simple abstraction for accepts to send and receive messages. It uh, eliminates the need to do service discovery, accepts just construct a message and, and send it, and the RIC platform will take care of delivering it to the right destinations. So that uh, concludes my portion of the talk. At this point, I guess we welcome questions. Uh, from the audience. Thank you.